Our anime begins with our main character, Hajime Nagumo, and his entire class being summoned into another world to defeat demons lurking in the labyrinth. They were regarded as heroes in the Isekai world, where everyone possessed a unique combat ability to kill demons and save humanity from their terror. But Nagumo was not like everyone else, he only had one skill that could be used to help others. However, one day on the 65th floor of the labyrinth named Abyss, nobody expected a monster to appear, and no one was powerful enough to defeat it. So Hajime slowed the monster's advance, allowing everyone to flee to safety, but while attempting to return to safety, his team provided backup support so that Nagumo could flee, but one spell was actually aimed directly at him. The person who betrayed Nagumo clearly wanted to kill him, but Nagumo refused to give up his life. So Hajime killed a demon beast to eat, but the beast meat could have killed him if it hadn't been for the water that came from the mysterious crystal. Hajime survived, but it had an effect on his body, and also gave him an exceptional skills. So Hajime began hunting down demon beasts in order to learn new skills from them. Seeing this, Hajime decided to descend to the lower floor rather than climb up to the floor in order to survive. As Nagumo approached the lowest floor of the labyrinth, he came across a girl who had been sealed away and begged Nagumo to save her. Hajime initially refused to release her, but after learning that she, too, had been betrayed by her own people, Hajime decided to release her from her shackles. After that, Hajime gave her the new name Yue because she no longer wanted her old name. As they descended to the lower floor, Hajime told her about how he was summoned by the god of this world to save humanity from rising demon attacks, but he was betrayed by his own friend as he fled to safety after holding back a monster for them. But on their way, a plant monster took control of Yue's body as they were walking down to the lower floor. So Hajime was still hesitant to shoot it down because of this. But once Yue gave her permission, Hajime shot the thing without hesitation. However, Yue was still mad about it. When they stopped to rest, Yue told them about the god's history. For a long time, the person who constructed the labyrinth was referred to as Maverick, the god's envoy who turned against them, and attempted to wipe off the planet, but when they were unsuccessful they built a labyrinth to hide from it. Then after that, they descend much further, till they reach the labyrinth's 100th floor. There, the final boss they had to fight was a damn snake with multiple heads. One by one, Hajime and Yue destroyed each of its heads, but the last one proved to be troublesome to deal with. Because the snake's last head nearly killed Hajime, but Yue got him to a safe place in time. But Yue was about to die while protecting Nagumo, but Nagumo awoke in time to save Yue. Finally, it took everything they had to defeat the final boss on the 100th floor. However, Kaori, one of Nagumo's close friends, was shocked to learn that Nagumo had died during their last expedition to the labyrinth. Kaori deeply cared for and felt for Nagumo, so she didn't give up on him, she had a feeling Nagumo was still alive. However, after defeating the boss, Nagumo and Yue advanced to another floor known as Maverick's Lair. As they entered, Nagumo entered a magical circle, which activated a recording of Orcus, also known as Maverick. He passed on all of his knowledge of this world, of the war between demons and humans, and of what gods truly are to Nagumo. That the one who started war between all races in the world was God himself. They did it for fun, and the person who discovered the truth wanted to save the world from God. They initially regarded themselves as liberators who wanted to save everyone. But the gods turned the tables on them and accused them of being a plague that wanted to ruin the planet after which they were recognized as mavericks. After that they were soon haunted by their own people because they chose to believe in God. So the mavericks built the labyrinth to hide from the world, and they included several tests in it so that whoever passed the tests would gain the power of each maverick who built their own labyrinth. He also gave Nagumo his own ancient creation magic, which he used to create several items in maverick's workshop. And now that they are fully prepared, Nagumo and Yue can return to the surface world. But the first thing they came across was a rabbit girl pleading for help. She wanted Nagumo to assist her beastmen in saving them from grave threat. She was exiled by her own people, because she could use magic and see into the future. With which she saw Nagumo's arrival, and she also knew that they wanted to get to the great tree that was shrouded in fog. 
Normal people would get lost in that foggy forest, but the beastmen would not. So Nagumo and Yue resolved to assist her people, and she offered to lead them to the great tree. Shia's magical power was similar to that of a monster. So other beastmen wanted to kill her, but her tribesmen intervened and saved her. However, as a result of this, they were forced to flee their hometown. And because Rabbit Man does not know how to fight, surviving in the wild forest was difficult. So, with Nagumo present, he taught and transformed entire villages into fighters. Rabbitman, on the other hand, took Nagumo to the great tree in accordance with their agreement. But he was unable to enter because it required several rings, such as the one he obtained from Orcas from the Labyrinth Abyss. So Nagumo, accompanied by Yue and Shia, began his journey to collect all rings and find a way to return to Tokyo to Nagumo's home. As Nagumo, Shia, and Yue were traveling, they came across yet another labyrinth. As they cleared out their floor, they reached the boss of the labyrinth and defeated it. Nagumo desired to return home by discovering an ancient magic that allows people to travel between worlds. But Nagumo was cautioned by the labyrinth's designer Mele Dai that in order to succeed, he might have to defy the gods. Nagumo will soon confront God he hit since he disobeyed the will of God and turned into an irregular person. Then Meldi gave them the ancient gravity magic in exchange for clearing out her labyrinth. Nagumo now possesses yet another ancient magic. Soon after, Nagumo was contacted by the head of the city guild, who wanted to hire Nagumo to find the Count's missing son. However, in order to complete his request, Nagumo laid out his terms, and the guild leader agreed to Nagumo's every terms. With that, Nagumo arrived in the town where the Count's son had gone missing. But Nagumo happened to run into Miss Aiko Nagumo's homeroom teacher in that town. She was surprised that Nagumo was still alive, so she wanted to know what happened with him in the labyrinth. Nagumo, on the other hand, chose to tell her everything late at night because he didn't want anyone else to hear it. Nagumo then told Miss Aiko about the god's history, which he had learned from Orcus, the creator of the labyrinth but she was even more surprised to learn that one of her own student deliberately hit Nagumo with his spell in the labyrinth in order to kill him. So Miss Aiko decided to join Nagumo in his task, and also to talk more about the matter he revealed the night before. They began searching the entire forest for the Count's sons, only to discover him all beaten up. He went missing after a dragon attacked his party and killed everyone. But when the dragon got in Nagumo's way, the dragon was easily defeated by Nagumo. The dragon's name is Tio, and she left her village to investigate rumors of people from another world. But when she became tired of traveling and stopped in the mountains, but there a man appeared and casted a manipulation spell on her while she was sleeping, and ordered her to kill the Count's son. But, more importantly, the guy was controlling Tio was leading an army of monsters to completely destroy her town. So Nagumo decided to assist them solely because Aiko had personally requested that she save the town. So Nagumo, Yue, Shia, and Tio intercepted the army's advance and completely destroyed the army on their own while also apprehending the person leading the demons to attack the town. Surprisingly, the perpetrator of this attack was Nagumo's classmate. He did all of this because he was enticed by demon's offer to make him powerful and superior to others. So the demons ordered him to kill Miss Aiko for them because all the heroes of the other world listens to her. He tried to kill her again, but Nagumo saved her life by killing him. So with that Nagumo finished his task and returned with the son of the Count. And, while there was still some free time, Nagumo had promised to take Shia out on a date. However, while visiting an aquarium, a strange fish informed them of a little girl being kidnapped and sold because she was a mermaid's child. So Nagumo naturally ignored it, but when he sensed a girl's weak aura, he immediately rushed in to save her. So because the mermaid race is officially protected by the kingdom, Nagumo and Shia gave Miu to nearby officers so that they could find her merfolk parents. But when she was kidnapped again by slave traders, Nagumo wreaked havoc on the entire city in order to save Miu. As the narrative progresses, Nagumo arrived in the border town with a letter for the town's guild leader from the guild leader of the merchandise town in Fueren. But suddenly, Endo, a classmate of Nagumo's, arrived to ask for assistance in rescuing his pals who were in peril in the labyrinth, but he was taken aback to find Nagumo there. 
Everyone in his class thought he died, but Nagumo cleared out the entire Orcus labyrinth on his own. So Endo asks Nagumo to save his old classmate because they came across a demon woman with completely different levels of power. So Nagumo agreed to the Endo request only because Miyu insisted Nagumo to save them. So Nagumo went to the labyrinth and arrived just in time to save his classmates. However, after seeing a demon controlling monster, Nagumo realized that the demon race had already completed a maverick's labyrinth. And it is there that they have acquired ancient magic to control monsters. Regardless of what kind of demon woman she was, Nagumo killed her mercilessly. However, the hero of that team was dissatisfied with Nagumo's method. But Nagumo didn't care about him or anyone else, he only agreed to save Kaori. Because, while Nagumo was on their team, she was the only one who cared about him. Nagumo saved everyone from the demon and led them safely out of the labyrinth, just as he promised. Looking at him again this time Kaori didn't hesitate and expressed her love for Nagumo. But Nagumo couldn't accept Kaori's feeling since he already has feeling for Yue. But Kaori did not give up. Instead, she decided to join Nagumo in order to instill the same feelings in Nagumo for her. And so our hero journey will continue in the next season.